Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Carolina Panthers. With that, let's get up to Charlotte. Standing by our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Carolinas and Bank of America Stadium here in Uptown Charlotte. Just a moment ago, the lights, the cameras, the action, all the pyrotechnics, everything was ablaze, everything was allowed here in Bank of America Stadium as Carolina emerged from their tunnel. And we are ready to go as the Panthers get set to match up with the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, happy to be with you. And CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical, who wins up front, who runs the ball the best and controls the clock, they will come out the victor. The big left foot of Sebastian Janikowski ready to get us started. And off we go from Uptown Charlotte. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They'll have Cam Newton calling the shots. The big man under center at 6'5", nearly 250 pounds. And when he's at the top of his game, you see that big smile? That's when you know everything is clicking. That means he's accurate throwing the football. They can't get him down in the run game. And his team is having a whole lot of fun because when they score a touchdown, some fan's going to get lucky and get the game ball. Newton on first down. Thomas has got it. Complete. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. To throw on second down is Newton. On the catch, it's Jarius Wright. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Quick slant there, gets him the first down, six yards on the play. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that, where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And his pass incomplete. When we look at this unit like we are now, Greg Olson has become such a reliable target in this league. Loves to be considered the number one option in the passing game in the offense he plays, and he lives up to it. Knows the defense is set for him, knows how to beat them. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. And a look at Seattle's defense. And free safety Earl Thomas has a list of accomplishments as long as anyone's arm. But the thing I think about with him at all times, no matter what happens in front of him on the defensive end of the ball, he's back there to erase any mistakes that happen. The top guy in the league, as far as I'm concerned, in that category. Come on now. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. And 
And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Encroachment, defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Still third down. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. And the penalty makes this a much more manageable third down, third and two. McCaffrey following the penalty. McCaffrey with a first down and more. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a first down throw for Newton. Quick throw, that's complete on the inside slayer. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. And they'll get this down to the 10. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. The first red zone opportunity for the Panthers thus far. They've got a first and goal from the 10-yard line. They'll run Anderson. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. A shotgun snap for Newton. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Devin Funches from 10 yards out. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned to get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Graham Gano on for the extra point. Extra point try, good by Gano. And it's now a 7 0 game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown.
Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They'll be led out by the man who proclaims to be from a whole pack of Badgers. Came into the league back in 2012, Russell Wilson. Gave the commencement address at the University of Wisconsin a couple of years ago. One of the most popular players ever to pull on the uniform there. The beginning of his career, he was a so-called game manager. Take care of the football and rely on the defense. Now, in this stage of his career, the offense runs through him, and it runs very well. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 27. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you gotta feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field, and when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. On second down, here's Wilson. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses, because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways, because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Now Wilson on first down. Wide open. It's Marshall complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And past the 30, down to about the 27. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Carson and forget about finding a lane he barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield it'll go as a loss of a yard and it'll set up third down well add that play to his resume real because he went to the Pro Bowl last year that's how you go to the Pro Bowl you make plays like that big time penetration and throw people for losses Cut. 
third and two. Now Wilson. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Mario Adelson with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Sebastian Janikowski to try the Seahawks' field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. And Janikowski bangs it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, brings on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion. And now they'll look at a third and two coming up. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field. But it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Off the bootleg, Newton, and he finds a man, it's Olsen, and he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle, they called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open. He finds a way to pick up a first down. Here we go. 
On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Here's Newton now on second down. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. First down, it's Newton. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's right. The ball comes out, but this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. I don't know about you, but I could hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession, no turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. They're less than two minutes ago in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. On first and ten, Newton. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Again, Newton. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. Fourth down, and here's Graham Gano now in the field goal unit for the Panthers. 
On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And Gano's kick is right through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11 play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Doug Baldwin and company getting ready to go again on offense. And you look at the numbers, not only has he not caught a pass, they haven't targeted him yet, and we're coming up toward halftime. And you remember our meeting with the coach beforehand? What did he tell us about him? I write his number on my play sheet, and I circle it in bold, bold type because I want to make sure he gets the ball and often. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Only three there on the screen. It's second down. Clock running, and the Seahawks, they're running too, trying to speed up to the line of scrimmage. Now it's Wilson. He's going to air this out for Baldwin. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Now, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. On third down, Wilson. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now he had a good amount of time to throw there, and at his level, he's going to pick you apart if you give him that time. You have to increase your urgency, whether you're blitzing, bringing extra pressure, or just your normal amount at him. You've got to get home, because if you don't, he picks up a first down just about every time, as he did there. First and ten, it's Wilson. He hits Baldwin right side. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Again, Wilson to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Was that a receiver? 
<laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. And he's got a man open. That's Marshall. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Wilson going to lead his guys up first and 10, and he's 5 for 6 now throwing the ball on this drive. Throwing again here, Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin as the first half is winding down. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. Sebastian Janikowski on for the PAT. Janikowski adds the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays, and it all culminates with a Seattle score. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. McCaffrey on the return. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Fifteen seconds, all that remains for this first half as they come up first and ten. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! We thought this one would be a close battle coming in and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Wilson of the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. They'll run it now, out of the gun. A very good move, but for a short gain out near the 32. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll go again with McKissick. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And the Seahawks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. He got 29 yards that time. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. They go play action now, Wilson. And this is caught, a spectacular one-handed grab there. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That was a terrific catch. I mean, to go up there and get it one-handed like that, but I almost want to go into that riff about back in my day, the gloves weren't quite like this. When did gloves really become prevalent, just in general? I think in the 80s. I think as we started to move through the 80s, especially as we got towards the latter part of that, but a lot of those were really like baseball batting gloves to begin with, with not much of a tacky area on the glove. In fact, there was none. I actually remember in cold weather games wearing the old scuba gloves, which you'd wear in the diving, but they would split too easily in the course of a game. Then the glove manufacturers got smart and started adding to it, and here we are today. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. This is Carson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Move the 
Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. When we talk about Luke Keekley, you can't talk about his overall game without talking about his intelligence and how he controls the whole defense. He quarterbacks that defense, and at times, will actually make checks just like a quarterback would on offense to get them into the right defense. They definitely were on that play. How about that finish? Holding that to a minimal game. There's Wilson to throw. There's Baldwin. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks are going to take the lead. Oh, such great concentration there, going right up against the side of the end zone, but able to get the feet in bounds. There are so many things that go into that catch, and you just mentioned the concentration, being able to catch the football, get your feet down in bounds, hang on to it all the way through the process of the catch. That was a phenomenal play. Janikowski on for the extra point. Janikowski good with the extra point, and that makes it a 17-10 score. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. Out to kick is Janikowski. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Panthers' offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second? Most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. They start the drive with Anderson. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Earl Thomas in on the stop. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Another run, this time McCaffrey. And he stopped immediately there. It was Jaron Reed who got him down early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Out of the gun. Newton. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Here's Michael Pilardi now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Now it's Lockett. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. And you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything <laughs> out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. 
the bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. They'll run it now, out of the gun. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we gotta get here. No, right here, right in front of them, melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Here's a give to Penny, and he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Seahawks with the possession. They also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth and final quarter. on first down he's got the tight end Vanette but I think the ball's out the psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now it's Carson. And he'll slice his way down to the 30 with a pickup of seven. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves him with third and just a yard. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. On third down. That's Carson, and he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction, so to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right, they need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. And Dixon over the middle. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Another nice pickup through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Here's Penny on the counter, and that one blown up quickly. 
as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word, put it in bold. Here we go. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. To throw is Wilson. The all-pro linebacker, Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And Janikowski bangs it through, and they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make him score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. After the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. McCaffrey on the return. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their own 27. <laughs> A shotgun snap for Newton. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll make it a second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. second down here's Newton and this is intercepted and that should do it picked up by the linebacker Bobby Wagner and they have possession and they have it at the 38 yard line obviously disappointing but you had to go for broke here down two scores so that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make and I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one
the Seahawks offense now. They get ready to come back onto the field. They're in a good spot. Two-possession game, barely, but a two-possession game here late. Now they just have to put this game on ice. Let's face it, right now, they're talking about ball security, taking care of it, not allowing anything crazy to happen, because we've seen nutty things yeah, happen down have. the stretch. <laughs> but they also have the security of the scoreboard. With that type of a lead, even if something goes haywire, they're still in good shape. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run! And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Penny, a first down carry. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20 yard line. The Panthers are going to take another timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. Hey, hey, and they'll run it again with Penny. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted four times out of six, not bad. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run for it with Penny. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 36 yards out. And Janikowski bangs it through, and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. 
McCaffrey on the return. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense right. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was looking for the connection with Devin Funches. And it's second down. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Back to the air, Newton on second down. And caught left side, Olsen. And 15 yards here on the catch and run. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Newton now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. From the gun, here's Newton. And they've got the hookup, this is Olsen. And to the 42 yard line here and brought down there. A gain of six there on first. Clock now under 30 ticks and running. And they'll spike it here at 27 seconds. The Panthers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. To the air again, Newton. And to the tight end, Olsen, right side. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. get up and spike it with 11 seconds remaining and it's incomplete and now we're down to 10 seconds the Panthers on third down they've hit two for four thus far this time it's third and three throwing again is Newton and it's knocked away and incomplete. Knocking it away there defensively, Justin Coleman. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. 
Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. of discipline defensively on fourth down and now that leads to a first and ten again Newton and he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete try to get it all back with one big shot right there but even if successful that doesn't get them all the way back to where they need to be can't totally abandon throwing the ball underneath as well so second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. One last throw here for Newton. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. But Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. Till next time, we say so long from Charlotte.